Here's Brody Brazil. You know, it really is amazing looking back how baseball stayed the same rule-wise for so long. There really weren't that many wholesale changes as opposed to the last decade alone. I mean, if I told you 10 years ago that the National League would soon have a designated hitter, you would have thought I'd be crazy. Or everybody who always commented on baseball, the only sport to not have any clocks or timers on the field, well, now we've got a pitch timer. And how about that courtesy runner for every half inning of extra innings in the regular season? They put a runner on second base to try and score more runs, to try and get these games over sooner without playing a 13th or 14th or 18th inning. So all of that should really lead you to understand it's no surprise that pretty soon, I think, baseball is going to have an automated strike zone that's right, a computer helping human umpires call balls and strikes. And it's not exactly what you might think or expect, but just know this. The wheels right now are being put in motion in AAA at the minor league level. And because that's happening, you basically know what's right around the corner. They're testing this in the minor leagues for actual use in the major leagues coming pretty soon. So what is ABS? You're going to hear a lot about ABS in the upcoming weeks and months and years. It's automated balls and strikes. Some people look at ABS and say abs. I don't have any abs. Well, technically I do, but all I have is automated balls and strikes. There's two ways to go about ABS. There's the full system and the challenge system. Now, they've been testing both of these in minor league baseball, the AAA level, for the last season plus. I think they started late last year. But the full system is this. Every pitch is determined by a computer, ball or strike, thanks to technology. So you really don't even need a home plate umpire, minus calling a play at the plate or making sure that outs are made or keeping tabs on the count just to kind of be there for the batter and catcher and obviously pitcher. That's the full system, which they have been testing partially in the minor leagues. They've also been testing the challenge system. Now, this is pretty much baseball as normal. The umpire is calling balls and strikes behind home plate, but the challenges only come upon request. So we say, wait a second, that wasn't a ball, that was a strike. Let's challenge. Pitcher can do it, catcher can do it, batter can do it. So the challenge system is kind of the way things are going right now. Like I said, baseball had been using both, but now they're really honing in on the challenge system, saying that they don't like the full system. They don't like a completely automated strike zone. They like the human element, and they like the challenge system in moderation. I'll get to how many challenges you get in just a second. But this preferred method of the challenge system, it actually officially begins full-time right around the corner, June 25th, at the AAA level of minor league baseball. So again, when they have settled in on this and they're fast-tracking this, you'd think that they might need a full season under their belt of minor league baseball, but eventually this is coming to the show. Here's what Major League Baseball and Commissioner Rob Manfred say about ABS, automated balls and strikes. The support for challenge over complete ABS is overwhelming from players and fans. And you're about to see the research that Major League Baseball has done here in terms of the different methods. Again, the challenge method, the mostly human element with the ability to challenge, that's preferred by 61% of team personnel, including players and front office, executives and the like. And 47% of fans say they like the challenge method as opposed to making no changes at all. Like, let's take technology out of all of this. 28% of team personnel and officials say they want to make no changes. 30% of fans are also in that category. And then there's a small percentage of people who say they want full automated balls and strikes. 11% of team personnel, including players, and 23% of baseball fans say they want no home plate umpire calling balls and strikes. That's kind of crazy to me that if you look in the stands of a full baseball stadium, almost one in four say we'd rather not even have a real human home plate umpire. They want to trust everything on the computer. That's really changing the game to go full automation like that. I think the, the hybrid challenge method might be best. It might be most sensible. It might not impact the game as much. And we'll get into 
like how baseball looks and feels and changes differently if they actually implement this eventually. So the challenge system, right, it's going to be implemented in the Pacific Coast League where you get three challenges per team per game. They're also going to try it out in the International League where it's only two challenges per team per game. And the reason that they're trying three and two is because this is basically what they've narrowed it down to. This is what they want to try in Major League Baseball. They're not sure if the, if the right number to start with is three or if it's two. And to be clear, there could be a lot more challenges than three or two per team per game if they're successful. You only lose your challenge. like They only go away if you lose the challenge. If you say, hey, I think that was a strike. And it comes up on the screen and it says, nope, that was a ball. By the way, you've seen this technology before, this kind of Hawkeye technology. They use it in tennis. That's probably the most popular example. The tennis ball hits the line or it's out of bounds or it's inbounds. They go to the challenge. It's instantly replayed on the big screen. Everybody watching the broadcast and spectating in person, they get to instantly see black and white, was that in or out? The computer doesn't have gray area. It tells you in or out, in this case, in or out of the strike zone as a ball or a strike. So is this ready for Major League Baseball? Like they're doing this in the minor leagues. They have been doing this in the minor leagues. How long would it take? What's the timeline? What could and should we expect? In my opinion, just like they did with the pitch timer, baseball is going to want at least a full season of one method. Like they've been trying out different things, the full automation and the challenge method. Now they're narrowing it down to just the challenge method for the second half of this minor league season. They probably want a full minor league season, at least under their belt. They'll get that in 2025 if they continue with only the challenge method. I should also alert you that a current, uh, the current, I should say, collective bargaining agreement with Major League Baseball and its players That expires on December 1st, 2026. So in the 2027 baseball season, there's a bunch of different new agreements that might take place, including salary caps or salary cap floors for baseball teams. So a lot of rule changes, a lot of procedural things usually come into play when there's a new CBA. And so when I say 2026, like... The the, uh, ABS, there's too many acronyms here. The ABS might be implemented either right before or after a brand new CBA. ABS, CBA, NBC, MLB. Now I'm just just playing around. So this is either going to get implemented right before or after the new collective bargaining agreement, but it's obviously something that players and the Players Association, like they're all going to want to wrap their their heads and their hands around what exactly is about to happen here. They want to make sure that everybody gets a a fair say in this. But I think what baseball cannot afford to do by any means is implement this for a year or two at the major league level and then take it away. You've got to make decisions and stick with them. Now, with the courtesy runner on second base and extra innings, they started that during the expedited 2020 season. And the plan was, hey, this is a unique year, a lot of crazy stuff going on. We're going to take this away when it's done. But they kept it. So that was fine. That was under an experimental season already. There was a lot going on. But now, under normal times, you cannot afford to introduce something like this as a trial. You're trying it out at the minor league level to know if you want to use it in the major leagues for sure, for a very long time. So that's why I think baseball will take their time here. I think it'll be at least 2026, but more likely as I start to think about the CBA, probably 2027 is when they would implement automated balls and strikes. It's a work in progress. And here's one of the biggest challenges. It's not actually even the technology of reliability or can it really tell you balls and strikes? No, they've got that part figured out. Here's more from the commissioner. Quote, There are two things you have to do. One is measure the track of the ball. We're good there, right? So the technology exists. They've got no problem, you know, getting the baseball to be red in a strike zone. Is it in or out of the zone? But the second thing you have to do is set the strike zone for each batter. And we're not there yet. 
Because, right, like on your screen during a baseball game when they show they show the strike zone, they pretty much paint one strike zone for almost all the different hitters, at least on all the broadcasts I've ever seen. That strike zone doesn't change a whole bunch. But what happens if you've got Aaron Judge as one batter and then Jose Altuve as the next batter? The strike zone inherently changes. So what baseball really has to figure out here is, are they going to settle in on a height-based strike zone, like a universal strike zone for everybody? Because that drastically changes the game. It's always been a stance-based zone. I put stanced. Stanced? No. You know what? I'm going to change that right now. There you go. It's a stance-based strike zone. So if you crouch down, I mean, technically, you know, it's still a certain height, but a smaller player has a smaller strike zone as a, as a compared to a bigger player, uh, height and stature-wise. Baseball's got to figure this part out. Do they dial in a different strike zone for automation differently per player? How do they go about doing that, right? Because before it was all the eye. It was just what the home plate umpire observed from standing right there. But in this case, they would literally have to devise a different strike zone for basically every player that comes up there. And what are they basing it on? So that is that is kind of a gray area that they will have to figure out. So how does this go? If they actually implement this, I know people say, well, baseball will dramatically change. We've never had this before. Other people say it's not going to change that much. And that's actually the side that I'm on. Because with three ta- challenges or maybe two challenges, you're probably really only going to use these challenges on a ball four or a strike three call. right? If the pitcher thought it was a strike and doesn't want to walk the batter, that might be a situation where you, I don't know, ask for the challenge, whatever the whatever the sign is going to be. You're not going to do this on an 0-1 count or a 1-1 count. You're only going to do this on an at-bat deciding count or call. Also, this has to be instantly available. It's got to be decisive. Just like tennis, we can't be dilly-dallying here. We've got to have this thing up, running, ready to go. Umpire presses a button or pushes a button on their hip pack, and it plays on the screen for everybody to see. It's got to be like that. We can't be waiting for things to render or take their time or the the scroll wheel of death or whatever it's called. We can't have that. It's got to come up quick, and it's got to be black and white, easily understood and trusted by fans. I really don't think if they do this right, this is going to add much time to games. It's not going to slow games down. There's not going to be a huge delay. This should be pretty quick. All things considered. And also, I I think the biggest part of this is it eliminates one of my worst fears at the end of a baseball game. Let's say it's bottom of the ninth. The home team is trailing by one, but they've got the bases loaded. If I said two outs, full count, whatever. Like the ultimate coming down to the wire situation, and it's a ball four, and the game should be tied, but it's called strike three because, you know, the umpire's human, and they want to get out of there. Hit three! Wait, wait, wait. Hit three! I would have done it better, but I didn't want to yell on the mic. So this kind of eliminates a final out of a game ever being in the hands of the umpire. So long as you've got a challenge, and you know you're right, This eliminates a game ever ending in that final out or, for example, if it was a strike and they call it a ball and the batter walks and the game is tied, this could save a game. Technology could save a game here if the umpire on a full count got it wrong one way or the other, like in that situation. So I think it's pivotal. I think this is a big deal. I think this this gets us closer to more accurate baseball. Gosh, you know what else I forgot to mention? Video replay and review. That's another thing that baseball has implemented in the last 10 years that, you know, 20 years ago, you never would have thought baseball would ever do this stuff. You can tell they're kind of on a roll. They're trying to modernize their game. They're using technology. They've been testing it for a while. And now I really think that they're going to implement this. Again, the fact that baseball has officially said we're doing this in AAA, we're not trying two different methods anymore. We're trying this one method. We're getting very like specific and granular here with it, it lets me know that there's going to be an automated balls and strikes situation coming to Major League Baseball sooner than later, maybe in 26, probably in 27, but definitely right around that time frame. 
Let me know what you think about it. Do you like this? Do you hate it? What side are you on? Put that in the comment section down below. Also go down there, hit that thumbs up button. That'll greatly help me, this video, and this channel. And by the way, speaking of that, if you've never seen me or any of this before, I'm really glad that you found me and I want to make sure you come back. And the best way to do that is to go down there also right now and hit that subscribe button if you're already not. I would really appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing you next time.